If there's one skincare ingredient I think you need in your skincare routine, it is a retinoid. I'm talking about retinol, tretinoin, adapalene. There are lots of different vitamin A derivatives and they come with lots of tips and tricks. So I'm gonna share those with you. All right, so why do you need a retinoid in your skincare routine? The answer is they increase collagen production, which is something that we all want and need. Our collagen production slows down by the time we hit about 25. It starts to decrease and decrease and decrease. And it's just sad because collagen is what makes up the framework, I guess, of your skin. It's what makes it bouncy and youthful and plump looking. When you look at a baby, they just have beautiful collagen and elastin, but collagen in their skin and it just makes them look so youthful. And that production slows down over time. So you need something like a retinoid to help increase that production, especially as you age. Just like collagen production, as we age, our skin cell turnover slows down. And what that means is that when your skin cell turnover slows down, then your skin starts to look dull and you start to get clogged pores and even hyperpigmentation stands out more because you're not getting that turnover of fresh new skin, not like you used to when you were younger. So what you see is kind of just like there, it's stuck on your face. And that's why also exfoliation is really important. One thing I do wanna point out though is just because retinoids increase skin cell turnover, it doesn't mean that it exfoliates your skin because I do see that conversation out there. It's very similar to exfoliation because you are getting the skin cells to turn over and essentially what you end up seeing is flakiness, right? But then you need your exfoliator to actually get rid of the flakiness. So the reason why I really love of retinoids is that you get a lot of benefits from these two functions, from the increased collagen production and the skin cell turnover. What you're getting is decreased clogged pores. So your pores end up looking like they're smaller and tighter because they're not clogged. They're not actually getting smaller in size. They're just not getting clogged anymore. You also get improved skin texture. So if you feel like you've got a lot of bumpiness or your skin feels like it's patchy or dull, then your, the retinoids will help make your skin look smoother. You also get reduced hyper pigmentation, which is basically the dark spots that you see in your skin. A lot of people get, for instance, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation after they've had a pimple where it's just this dark mark that won't go away for a long time. If you're getting increased skin cell turnover, then you're more likely to get rid of that dark spot quicker. And that same thing goes for fine lines and wrinkles. With the increased collagen production, you're getting more plumpness, but also with that skin cell turnover, you're exposing that fresher skin. So you're not gonna get as wrinkly. The, the texture of your skin just improves overall. The thing that makes retinoids confusing is that they come in different forms. So a lot of people don't know if they should start using retinoids, maybe for their age. They don't know if they should get a prescription or if they should get over the counter. There are three main types of over the counter retinoids. There is your typical retinol, there is retinaldehyde, and then there are retinol esters. And then also kind of making its way on the scene is the Gran Active. You hear about Gran Active a lot more because it's really, really gentle. The reason why people want different types of retinoids is because the effectiveness changes and that's because they have to go through conversions. The most effective and the strongest of all the retinoids is tretinoin and that's because it is actual retinoic acid and that's where you want it to get. Next is retinaldehyde and that goes through one conversion to become retinoic acid on your skin. So when you apply it, it converts and then it turns into retinoic acid and in that conversion process, it becomes a little bit more gentle on your skin. Below retinaldehyde, Aldehyde is retinol, and retinol has to go through two conversions to get to retinoic acid. So the two conversions makes it even more gentle than retinaldehyde. And then by the time you get to the retinol esters, they have to go through three conversions to become retinoic acid on your skin, and that's what makes them gentler and weaker on the skin. Of the over-the-counter retinoids, retinol esters are the most stable, but they're also the weakest. I like to think of them more so for their antioxidant power, and that's sometimes for your skin, but mostly for formulation. When it comes to products with retinaldehyde, one of my favorites has been this one from Allies of Skin. This is their 1A retinol and peptides overnight mask. This feels a lot more like a moisturizer to me and it's really nice on the skin. This is a product that I've been using for a long time. I feel like it's just nice on the skin. I don't experience any kind of sensitivity with it. I don't feel like my skin turns red or just feels irritated at all whenever I use this, but I do feel like it's strong. I like to use 
use this two to three times a week and I get wonderful results from it. The reason why I like the Allies of Skin version of retinaldehyde is because it's encapsulated, so it releases it over time. And so it's a little bit of a slower release and it makes it just more gentle on the skin. So I never have any problems whenever I use this one. That doesn't mean that everybody will feel the same way about it, but for me, it's definitely really gentle feeling on the skin considering that it is retinaldehyde. It's also really great because it has different antioxidants in here. It has different peptides in here. So it's just an all around really nice product. And I like to use it kind of like a moisturizer. I know that some people are obsessed with Medic 8, which is a program that has retinaldehyde in different levels. So you can go onto their website and choose the one that you want as far as the strength of it goes. And then I know that Aven has a really wonderful retinaldehyde product as well. When it comes to actual retinol, there are lots of choices on the market. Obviously my brand Naturium has different options for you. We have a retinol complex serum. We also have retinoid oil, which is a Gran Active. And then we also have this, which is my personal favorite. This is our retinol complex cream. You might see different labels because we just changed the name to complex cream because the 2.5% was confusing people a little bit. And that's because we have a complex in it. We have encapsulated retinol in this product to keep it really stable and make it really gentle on the skin because it's slow release. But we also have Bakuchiol in here and we have another plant-based alternative to retinol. A couple of other retinol products that I really like are, for instance, this one from Obagi Clinical. It's their Retinol 0.5 Retexturizing Cream. It's also encapsulated retinol, so it's very gentle on the skin and feels nice and thick. And then there's this one from Lancer that has the combination of retinol and Bakuchiol. As far as the prescription retinoids go, the most popular happen to be tretinoin, adapalene, tazeratine, and now there's a newer one on the scene as well called triferritine. A lot of people have probably heard of Retin-A and that's actually a brand name and tretinoin is the generic name of it. Of all of the prescriptions, you've probably heard of tretinoin because it's the most common. It's the one that your doctors tend to prescribe to you and therefore skincare benefits. Tretinoin happens to be the most common of all of the prescription retinoids and that's because it's retinoic acid and it's the the one that people get probably the most versatility with, so you can use it for hyperpigmentation, you can use it for anti-aging, you can use it for acne. Whatever problem that you're having with your skin, your dermatologist might recommend tretinoin for that. That said, if you're dealing with acne, you might actually get prescribed adapalene or tazeratine because those speed up that skin cell turnover and really target pimples and acne. So those will really help with that. And it tends to be prescribed to people who are a little bit younger as well. So can you start retinoids when you're young? You absolutely can. It just depends on what it is that you're trying to treat. And when it comes to adapalene, you can actually now purchase Differin, which used to be prescription only, but you can get that over the counter and that has adapalene in it. The reason why you might hear more about tretinoin is because it's more of a catch-all type of retinoid, whereas adapalene and tazeratine are more targeted to acne. Whereas the newer one on the scene, triferritine, has been really shown to help with dark spots and inflammation. And then you've also probably heard of isotretinoin, which is is also referred to as Accutane, and that is taken orally. It's usually prescribed for people who are dealing with severe acne. It has a lot of different risks that can come up with it because it is such a strong ingredient. So you definitely have to be under the care of a dermatologist to get a prescription for it. And there are a lot of different protocols that you have to go through for it as well. That said, it's not just for acne. I know lots of dermatologists who will prescribe just a low dose of it to help even control sebum production. When it comes to tretinoin, you have to get a prescription for that, but that does not mean you have to see a dermatologist. These days there are programs like Curology, there's also Muesli, and what you do is you basically go onto the website, you fill out all of the information, and then they assign you, I think, a nurse practitioner, and then they can prescribe you pretty much a formula, a compound that they create that can have tretinoin in it, and then they usually include other ingredients that they think might be beneficial to your skin. And then I wanna throw out there, just because it's compared to retinoids and specifically retinol all the time, Bacuchiol. Bacuchiol is a plant-based ingredient. It is not a retinoid, but it does get compared to retinol. And it does have studies that show it can mimic some of the positive effects of retinol, but it's not the same exact thing. And in my opinion, they tend to work better synergistically. And what I mean by that is they just tend to work better together, a little bit more effectively. So if you want to boost the power of your retinol, you can add an ingredient like Bacuchiol to your product and it can make it just a better performing product for your skin. That doesn't mean that it's going to be the best and that you need to have Bacuchiol in it, but 
I tend to see that Bakuchiol works better when it's actually used with other effective ingredients like retinol. That said, if you're breastfeeding or pregnant and you can't use a retinoid, Bakuchiol is a great ingredient to use in the meantime. I've also seen people with really sensitive skin say that they love Bakuchiol or they're really interested in it because it has less side effects to it. I think it's important that you give a real retinoid to try. There are such gentle ones, even the esters that are very, very gentle. Those are a way to really ease into trying retinoids and getting your skin kind of used to it so that you can get the true benefits of a retinoid. One of my favorite products with Bakuchiol is the Biosense Phyto Retinol Serum. I love it. It has niacinamide in it too, so it really helps to brighten your skin. And then I know that people love the Herbivore Bakuchiol Serum. Retinoids are beneficial for everyone. Like I said earlier, you can even start using it as a teen, especially if you're dealing with acne. I think that the best age to really start a retinol or a retinoid is when you are at least 25 because that's when your skin cell turnover slows down, that's when your collagen production slows down, so this is when you really need to boost it. If you start using it earlier, there are no issues with that. The thing to keep in mind is that skincare is personal and it's all about figuring out what works best for you when it comes to retinoids. A good example, for instance, is that I am not a tretinoin person. I do not love the process of you know, going through the retinization of my face, I've never figured it out. And I am one of those people that can be very diligent. I believe that slow and steady wins the race. So I'm all about my over-the-counter retinoids. That said, there are a lot of people who believe that the only thing that works for them is pure retinoic acid. Like it has to be tretinoin and that is it. For me, I never get past the flakiness of my skin, the irritation. I sometimes end up with contact dermatitis because I push it too far because I'm trying to get through it. I don't like the purging that I get. I feel like my skin ends up looking dull instead of glowy. And that's just because I never seem to figure out the correct amount for my skin. And so I, I just don't deal with it because I don't really need to. I feel like I get the results that I need from retinol. That said, even retinol can have its side effects and these are expected side effects. I don't want people to think that just because you're experiencing any of this stuff that you have to toss your retinol. It's all about the process that you go through with it. And I also wanna point out that just because you don't experience any side effects doesn't mean that your retinol isn't working for you because again, skincare is personal. So some of the things to keep in mind is that when you start using a retinoid, you can experience flaking, you can experience redness, you can experience itchiness, you can definitely experience purging because you're getting that skin cell turnover and you can experience increased sensitivity. For a lot of people, it's about easing into the use of your retinoids and getting your skin kind of used to it. And it can take like three to four weeks, sometimes longer than that to really get get your, I guess, get your flow with your retinoid. So it's all about figuring out your system and building up your tolerance to it. So if you do want to start a retinoid in your skincare routine, some of my tips are one, I would only use it at night, especially if you're just getting started on a retinoid. You can use some retinol products during the day. It just depends on whether the retinol is photostable and that means it's not sensitive to the sun. And you also just wanna make sure that you're really diligent about wearing your sunscreen. That said, you should just be diligent about wearing your sunscreen in general. Another thing to keep in mind is that a higher strength retinoid, so whether that's your tretinoin or even just the difference between a 0.5% to a 1% retinol. The higher the strength, the more beneficial it could be, but that also means that it can be irritating to the skin. So you really then have to ease into it because if you get the irritation, then you end up having to back off and then you don't get the results. So it turns into this whole cycle. So you wanna find the right percentage for your skin. For most people, I say to actually start off with a lower percentage or even a retinol product that doesn't even bother to list the percentage because we know it's gonna be more gentle. If it lists on the packaging that it's actually a really gentle retinol that's even better to get started with because while you might not seem like you feel the results or see the results it doesn't mean that you're not getting the results and at the very least you're getting that tolerance built up to it second do not use it every single night I like to do it about two times a week to start and then add in a day as each week goes by and see how my skin tolerates that what I also do is I will stop using all of my other strong actives like the chemical exfoliators think like AHAs and BHAs especially because that can just make my skin even more sensitive. And then after a couple of weeks of getting my skin used to the retinoid, I might start to add them back in slowly. I also use really hydrating and moisturizing products in my skincare routine when I do add in a new retinoid, especially if I am bumping up the strength of the retinoid that I'm using. I wanna make sure that my skin gets that soothing effect as well because it will start to feel a little bit more sensitive. If you are only using a retinoid like once or twice a week and you're still feeling like your skin 
skin just won't tolerate it. One thing that you can do is buffer it or apply it after your moisturizer. So you typically would put your active, like your retinol or your vitamin C or your AHA or your BHA, you want that closest to the skin so that it's really effective. But if you're feeling like you're too sensitive to it and you wanna build up that tolerance, what you can do is then apply your moisturizer first and create almost like a seal on your face and then apply your retinoid product and that helps to buffer it a little bit. You can also actually mix a little bit of your retinoid with your moisturizer and apply it in that way too. But my favorite way to do it is to layer it. So that's applying my moisturizer and then I let it dry down and then apply my retinoid. And that's the best way to avoid that sensitivity. And the reason for the dry down part is if you think about it, I always say that your products are much more effective when your skin is damp. So when you're applying your retinoid, you actually want your skin to be dry if you don't want to have that increased sensitivity. And that's because damp skin will just make your retinoid work harder for you. That said, once you are used to your retinoid, you can definitely apply it to damp skin so you get more of the effects of it. For people that are using prescription retinoids, specifically tretinoin, you want to make sure you only use a pea size amount and apply that to your skin. If you use too much of it, it can also be too strong for your skin. And last, you definitely want to wear your sunscreen. I know I already said that, but I really want to drive that home. When you're getting increased skin cell turnover, you are getting fresher, newer, baby-like skin hopefully. So you want to protect that skin from the sun and from UV rays. So you have to wear your sunscreen and you have to reapply it. Now let's talk about results because I think people really want to see quick results when they're using any of their skincare products. And just like your other skincare products, retinoids need some time too. If you're using your retinoids just for improvement of your skin in general, like you want brightening, you want some firming, you want some anti-aging, then you can expect to see those kinds of changes start to happen within four to six weeks. If you're looking for acne improvement, you should give it at least 12 weeks. And when I say you'll start to see these results, I don't mean that your skin will just completely change in that amount of time. You should really give it about six months to truly see a transformation. And what I mean by results is you'll have improved collagen production, your elasticity in your skin will be better, you'll have tighter looking pores, way less acne, your dark spots will look a lot better, a lot lighter. They might not be completely gone because that can take a very long time to get rid of. And you might even see that your fine lines and wrinkles look a little bit better. So if you're just getting started with retinoids, I know that's a lot of information to take in. There's even more once you actually start to try things out. And there are so many different products that you can consider as well. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comments below. You can also join our private Facebook group. I'll leave a link in the description box. We talk about retinoids and all types of skincare and even just beauty products and treatments in general in there. You can also find me on Instagram. I'm at Susan Yara and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.